Hi students, it's Mrs. Gifford. Today we're going to continue working with rational and irrational numbers. After today's lesson, you will be able to determine if the product or quotient of two rational numbers, two irrational numbers, or one of each is rational or, ir or irrational. You're going to want your calculator for these this lesson, so if you don't have it by you right now, hit pause, go get it, and come back. All right, so now that everybody has their calculator, we're going to take a look at some examples. And the first slide that we're going to talk about are the product ones. So in this case, we're going to take a look at a rational number times a rational number. So I have 1 third times 1 third, and I know that 1 third is a repeating decimal, so they are both rational. So I'm going to use my rules of fractions, which say multiply straight across. And 1 third times 1 third gives me 1 ninth. And then I'm going to change 1 ninth into a decimal by doing 1 divided by 9. And when I do that, I end up getting 0 0.1 repeating. And as we just said before, we know that repeating decimals are rational. So in this case, the product of two rational numbers is going to be rational. Second example, we have 4 times the square root of 3. The first thing that I'm going to show you is actually how to enter it on the calculator. If you have one of the ones we recommend, which is the TI30X2S, you're going to type in 4 times, then you're going to hit the second key, and look for the x squared key. Right above it actually is the square root symbol. And then you would type in 3. And then I also want you to find the other button that has the other little closing parentheses in it. Now, when you do that, if you enter it correctly in your calculator, it should look something like this. And the reason why I have you put that other little end parentheses there is because you want to make sure that the calculator knows just to do the square root of 3. When we do the last example on this slide, um, it'll maybe be a little bit more obvious. So once you type that in, go ahead and hit enter, and then we get a decimal of 6.928203223. What do you notice about the decimal? It doesn't repeat, it doesn't stop. So in this case, this product is irrational. So when you have one of each and you multiply, it's irrational. So let's take a look at this last example when we have two irrational numbers. So the first one is pi times the square root of 3. So just like I had you do up in example 2, enter that into your calculator. Your display should look something like, whoops, not with the 3 underneath it. Grab my eraser here and fix that. All right, so I've got pi times square root of 3, okay, and then go ahead and hit enter, and what do you get there? We get 5.44, Again, just like the one before, this one goes on and on and on, so this is irrational. Okay, so let's take a look at this last example. It's the square root of 5 times the square root of 5. So again, you're going to enter it into the calculator. Whoops, not the 5. Same thing I did last time. All right, so we're going to put square root of 5 in here. Square root of 5 times square root of 5. If you don't put that second parenthesis in there, the calculator, oops, parentheses and then 5, the calculator is actually going to do 5 times the square root of 5, and then it's going to do the square root of that. That's why it's important to make sure that you close off what specifically you want it to do underneath. So when you enter this and hit equals, you should get 5. What do you know about the number 5? It is a rational number. So in this case, when you multiply one of each, you're going to get a rational result. So now let's take a look at the quotients. The quotient is the answer when you divide, so it's going to be the same thing with multiplication except division. So the first one, we have a rational divided by a rational, and I know that the square root of 4 is 2. 
So the first thing that I'm going to do here is simplify this to 1 half over 2. And then because I have 2 as the denominator of a fraction and a numerator, um, the numerator is a fraction as well, I'm going to put a 1 underneath that 2. From here, I'm going to use the rules for fractions, which say when you divide by a fraction, keep the numerator, change division to multiplication, and you're going to flip the denominator. And when you flip it, that's called it's reciprocal. And from here, this problem should look exactly like the first one on the last slide. So we do 1 half times 1 half, which is 1 fourth. And we know that 1 fourth is the same as 0 0.25. 5 as a decimal. And that again is a terminating decimal. So we know that when we divide two rational numbers, that becomes rational. <clears throat> so next one, we have rational divided by irrational. So 7 divided by square root of 5. So we're going to enter this one into the calculator. 7 divided by square root of 5 equals, and when you hit enter with that one, 3.13. 0495 and 98. Oops, I'm sorry, I'm looking at. Oh, yeah, wrong notes, sorry. Um, and 168. My apologies, folks. All right, so looking at this decimal again, this is not repeating, not terminating. So this is irrational. All right, so let's do the next one. Irrational divided by rational. Again, this is the square root one. So we need to make sure that when we enter it into the calculator that we close off the parentheses underneath that square root symbol. Okay, and so when we do that, we get 0 0.35355. Three three nine one, and just like the one before, this has no pattern; it doesn't stop. So this is also irrational. Okay, last two examples: irrational divided by irrational. We have the square root of two divided by the square root of three. So enter that into your calculator. And when you hit enter, you get 0 0.8164. Oops, I'm going to have to curve this one around to 96581. And again, this is irrational. Okay, but I've got this last example here. What do you notice about this last example? It's exactly the same thing in the numerator and the denominator. And when you divide something by itself, what's the result? It's simply just 1. And what do you know about the number 1? It is rational. So in this case, with the division, it can also be either rational or irrational. So there you have it, folks, the products and quotients of rational and irrational numbers. Have a great day.